Welcome to the CFA Connections Plain Talk series. This is a special five-part video series on how to become a corporate flight attendant. Starting with a complete overview on how to navigate the CFA Connections platform pages, start here and how to become a CFA. This is a complimentary and robust step-by-step -step guide on how to start your career as a corporate flight attendant. We include numerous resources, training and career development programs, scholarship opportunities, mentorship programs, and more. In the other videos in this series, I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with corporate flight attendants, and we discuss how they became corporate flight attendants, as well as what they wish they had known when starting their careers. These are all not to miss discussions. Let's get started. I think that what's really interesting about this industry is that it's, it's private and no one really knows about it until you know about it. And I think that's what happened for me is I had no idea that this industry existed. I knew of flight attendants. Uh, I wasn't, you know, super gung ho on being a flight attendant. I thought it was a great job of course, you wanted to travel. But I was happy where I was. Um, and then my, my friend who's a flight attendant, she mentioned to me, she said, you know, you love to travel. Why don't you become a private jet flight attendant? And the ears went up, the goosebumps, the aha moment, whatever you want to call it, happened to me. And from the day I heard about this industry, this job, this career, I never took my foot off the gas, not one day. And I think you know, specifically for my story was, I just knew I had to be a part of it. I knew that I had, I'm in the Four Seasons right now and I used to work here at the Four Seasons. Um, and, and before I could get a job, and this is anyone who is always asking me, what should I do? What kind of training should I do? I always invite them to like look into hotels, high luxury places, because it, it does give you a really good idea of what's expected. You know, the, the clientele that's expected, what's being served. Um, I think that's a really good place to start if you have no um, previous experience in, in aviation and uh, in service and things of that nature, customer service. So I think luxury hotels, luxury restaurants, things like that. Um, so again, that's where, where your background can decide or help you become who you are. And I think everything has brought me to this point. Every single thing has brought me to where I am today. I am flying all over the world. I am meeting such interesting people. And I am I really have found, um, oh, I found my love. It's just, just and, and it's the community. I think the thing that was the most amazing was the community. When I decided that I wanted to do this and I was reaching out um, on LinkedIn and Instagram, oh my goodness, the reception. You know, this kind of job is so, like I said, private, you think, oh my God, what are they going to think? Like, I'm a nobody, you know, I'm, I'm here asking, what are, what's your advice? And, and everyone is so receptive and is so thoughtful and they're always giving you ways. And it's really up to the person to say, okay, I have all this information. What am I going to do about it now? And I think that is what's going to tell you what kind of flight attendant you're going to be. I think that alone, that moment of, okay, I've asked the questions, I've done the YouTubing and the, 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 the Google searches because it's going to take a fiery heart to figure out who you are in this industry. And I think th in that moment, I knew that I would be successful because I was never going to give up. And yeah. And I think, uh, you know, uh, not everyone is for everything, you know, and I, you know, I have colleagues, friends that have done it and you know it's not for them it doesn't need to be for everyone it's such a specific uh, like anything it's you know you may like fixing cars but that doesn't mean you want to be an auto mechanic like you know it, it doesn't mean that you have to do that thing and I, I even in the midst of figuring out how to do this job I was also trying to figure out how to just do what I wanted to do and do what felt right to me because newsflash it took me like a year and a half to get into this industry there was COVID I'm in Canada it's a smaller market all these different you know obstacles that came up against me and in the midst of that there's a lot of what do I do did I did I waste my time like where do I go and again it was one of those things that was like no 
I need to be on these planes. I would look up at the sky. I would see the private planes leave um, Montreal airport. And I would go, I need to be on that plane. And now I am. And no looking back. Never. I could never look back. Is you always get asked that question of, you know, once I've done my training, how soon do it be, you know, do I find? Ah, oh my goodness. Soon. And it's yeah. an impossible question to answer because we don't know. And exactly. for you tomorrow or a week or a month or longer, such as yourself, and it has nothing to do with your capabilities. It's all has to do with everything of being timing in the right place at the right time, meeting people, referrals. It's, there's a lot of steps to launching this career, I think, than just going to get my training. I 100% agree with you. And I and funny, what we're speaking of, is what would I have liked to know? And I think that was one of the things that I kind of knew because I, was, I really was reaching out to a lot of women in the industry, a lot of people. I, I was reaching out to you as well. And it's going to take some time. It might take you some time. You know, and you and maybe in the class that you have, you know, done your training, maybe other people will fly right away. Again, what you said, it has nothing to do with your capabilities, your your desire, your want. It's all about timing, where you live, where you're based, like all of those things have such an important role that play. And um, had I had I known in the beginning, beginning, I would have prepared myself um, financially. I would have prepared myself emotionally to take a few hits just in, in terms of waiting, in terms of, I don't know what's going on and maybe made myself a little bit more of a cushion um, after the training than saying, okay, I'm done, hire me, you know? Um, because the will is there, but still the experience is not there. There's some things that, you, there are some things that you have to learn out of a plane before you get on the plane. And like, that is so key. And we're all doing that. So I think that was something that I would, if I had known in the beginning that baby girl, just take your time, <laughs> just take your time. Yeah. yeah. I think that's some wise um, recommendations there to share and to discuss, because I think too many times I see new to industry, they just jump in with both feet and pay for the training and haven't done the research to find the, what is the market in their area, what the supply and demand is, what their opportunities are. And because of social media, you were also networking and reaching out to many of us. So we all knew who you were and we're giving you guidance and directions and answering questions. And I think that's a really important tool because during COVID, we didn't have in-person events going on then. Yeah, yeah. One more hurdle when you're starting this career because we're a very social community and meeting exactly. events and forums and conferences and whatnot. Those are the key because it only takes that one connection to give you that first, you That's know, right. and so I think that was, you know, for you to persevere through all of that, that's a testimonial to your talents and skills too, and your drive and hunger for this career. Why, thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. I, it, it, it does mean a lot, you know, and we all look up to you. We all do because you you're you're totally worth it and you have all the experience and you know we have we have to learn. Like we have to learn from someone. We have to learn from someone somewhere. And I'm always I just uh, this morning I was sharing with a colleague of some inspo that I, you know, snap off of Instagram. I'm always so inspired by other flight attendants, uh, by, uh, you know, fine dining and plating. And you're, that's the really, that's the thing that I think I love the most about this industry is, oh my gosh, you get to be so creative. My yes. goodness, you get to just, it's like a field day on the most beautiful aircraft. So the aircrafts don't even need that, that, you know, you're putting makeup on a beautiful woman. So all you're doing is really just enhancing uh, the aircraft and, I, I just think it's so fun. I feel really privileged, really privileged every single time I enter an aircraft because uh, we, I, sometimes I go on YouTube, it's like a little thing that I do. Sometimes I go on YouTube and I look on, uh, you know, Aviation Network and all that stuff. And I look in the comments and I look at all the people who would love to fly those aircrafts and be on those aircrafts. And they're like, oh, if I had the money and I think, oh my God, I get to do that. I get to be a part of that small niche that 
gets to work on them and knows them in and out and knows the 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 operators and the the suppliers and I think oh my god like how did I get so lucky to be a part of this industry so yeah business aviation is oh my it's been a gift it's been a complete gift it it is a gift and but it's not just presented to you you know you have to work for it and you know to obtain that and there are the the dreamers that you know oh i would always love to do it but the, they're not they don't have that hungry drive they're not the doers yeah they're not the doers it's a big difference between wanting and doing because we're so committed and passionate about the whole experience and it's all customer service forward it's all hospitality and customer service service driven we've got the cabin safety aspect but we're the ambassadors in the cabin that make or break the client experiences you know and so we've got the intimate um relation with those clients in these cabins on these amazing aircraft i've been in what business aviation 22 23 years now and i still remember my first few trips stepping on that plane and just being so proud of being on this business jet and being able to do what i can do and but and i think you know and this is long before social media and how we all found success is because we had the mantra of treating that plane and leaving that aircraft better than when we when you found it and that was word of mouth that was the only way we right work back then and now through social media and everything else it's just exploded this industry really exploded and especially since the pandemic our career field has really um raised a few bars and levels I think from so on a multitude of things and there was a huge influx and um of new to industry too and i still see a lot of people coming in and there's the success stories and then the frustration ones and that's why i'm always you know remain determined never defeated because it just it's all about the fit and i do those in my workshop to talk it's a fit you have to find the fit both ways they have to be the fit for you and you have to be the fit for them and I think business aviation, have you discovered, it's a very emotional industry. It's all about that personal connection. I agree. And to piggyback off of that, I think uh, it's so hard. It's one of those things, if you don't understand, you don't understand until you understand. And I remember hearing that all the time. I was like, but I'm amazing. I would fit with everyone. Oh my gosh. That's me wishful thinking. But you think that. And, but there, that's not how life is, you know, and that's not how um, that our clientele operates, you know, especially when it's their aircraft or, you know, their, their operations. It's not about, but I'm such a nice person. It's so much more than that. It's, it's getting along with crew. It's how you, it's, how, it's just so different. And there's so many aspects to what that fit is that you can't just say, oh, well, I think, um, you know, you're, you're nice and they're nice. And no, it's so much more than that. Um, and again, yeah, that's another thing that in the beginning, I wish I had really taken more heed to is just understanding it's not you. If you don't get called back for a plane, it's not always that you were mean or that you were messy or it's just, it wasn't the, the right fit. That's the way it is in this industry too. Yeah. I, you know, and when I started out too, because I would get compliments, like, you know, the, the clients loved you and thought the service was great, but they prefer a female. Okay. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, you can't, a lot of this is just organic. You can't change it. And I see a lot of times on social media, um, like in Facebook groups where people are having interviews and they want, what should I do? Do you have any recommendations? I'm like, be yourself because that's how you're going to find the fit, have that personal connection. And don't be afraid of being nervous because if you're nervous, own it, tell them you're nervous, but they want to know you. They've got your resume. So they've got your professional skills listed. Now they want to get to know you because that is a huge key in, in the fit um, between your fellow crew members and the but clients. I don't know if there is anything else specifically you would like to share to anyone starting out. Starting out. If you go starting out, I would really say like put it all in, be all in. Don't be halfway. Don't, don't think that, you know, I just want to travel. And I, I, 
I want to be on a, I want to take a picture on a plane. Like this career, this industry is so much more than pictures and posts and what we see on the, what we show. It is everyday choosing to do this. It's everyday choosing to do this. And it's choosing to be away from family. It's choosing to be away from friends. It's choosing to be away from loved ones. It's choosing to be away from home. Whatever home is to you, it's choosing to be away from that. And you're you're putting yourself out there. So whatever you decide, please be intentional about it. Know what you're doing. Know what you are about to open up. Because when you do say, okay, I see all the pros and all the cons and I still want to go, what a gift. What a gift you are about to open. This industry has raised me. I felt like I walked in and I, I kind of knew stuff and I did know a lot, but boy, have I been, you know, I can walk taller. I can, I am so proud of who I am and what I do. And everyone is always just so amazed because really we are, so, we are the, I think we are the luckiest people on the earth. So when you are intentional and you've decided, yeah, I heard about this job and I have a friend or, you know, I've seen it on YouTube or whatever the case, whatever, wherever it takes you, where, wherever it got you from and it takes you, oh my gosh, be ready for the ride of your life because you really are, oh man, you're about to enter the best phase of your life. Yeah. Well That's said. what I would say. It's Thank just, yeah. it's just the best. It's the best. The best here. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you so much, Christina. That that was really awesome.